Hello everyone, this is video number 2 of the series of Mantis Shroom tutorials. In the previous video I showed you how to quickly uh, install, what's the easiest way to install Mantis Shrimp. So we got our components copied into Grasshopper and now I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully everything worked out and you're set up. So when you come to Grasshopper and you go to Archilab tab, you're going to have all these components. So in this video I'm going to show you how to export some geometry over and you know what the data tree uh, structure versus a list is in Dynamo, so you're gonna learn a little bit of, you know, how to control that from Grasshopper, uh, and then it will show up in Dynamo. So the first thing you want to do is grab an Mantis Shrimp export component. So this is what we're gonna use to export geometry. There's another export component which we use for exporting data. I'm gonna talk about that just a little bit later. So for now, we're just gonna do geometry. The basic geometry would be a point and I'm gonna just gonna use a grid point. So I'm gonna create the planar grid and I'm going to use I'm gonna use a construct point as a base for that grid and then place it in zero zero location And if you drop another panel really quickly, you can see that this is basically this is basically our geometry setup. We have our grid of points, um, and you can see it in in Rhino over here. So these are our points, and now we just need to use Mantis Shrimp to export them to Dynamo. So plug your points into geometry, grab another panel, and you can use either panel or an actual file path component. I really have no preference. Um, let's just use a panel because it's more obvious of uh, you know the location that you're pointing at. Um, just going to delete this really quickly but here's our folder location that we want to save it into. You copy and paste it in here and our backslash and then a file name that you want to save that geometry to. So file01.go and the go is really just an ambiguous extension doesn't really mean anything you just want to give it some sort of extension and then last thing a boolean toggle that goes into export you set that to true you saw a little message pop up here it just tells you that message was successfully successful in exporting the geometry to the specified location that's it ready to go if you um, if you switch over to dynamo you're going to be reading a grasshopper file. So if we go to the grasshopper tab, not the rhino tab, grasshopper tab, read grasshopper, read grasshopper file. It needs two things. It needs a file path and it needs a boolean. A file path pointing us at the file 01 geometry that we just created and a boolean set to set to true. Now if I grab a watch hit run and there it is, voila, our points. I'm gonna I'm gonna just really quickly put those side by side so it's easier for you to uh, to visualize what's happening and how that you know how changes in grasshopper impact what's what's happening to uh, on the dynamo side so here we are so a couple of things that we can do with this list uh, let's imagine that we wanted to uh, flatten it let's say that we want to get a single list of all the items well you just flatten it um, and let's see how that translates over and this is actually going to be also a good example just because I didn't use file from path it's going to be a good example of what happens uh, if you don't do that so you see I hit run and nothing really happened because Dynamo at this point the way it's set up with just the file path doesn't understand that it needs to look for changes to this file so what we will need is a file from path 
to put that in between those two nodes. Now Dynamo is going to automatically look for changes to this file. So when we graft it or simplify it, and that structure here changes, the file changes, this is automatically going to update. So here we are. Here's our flat list of points, just like it is here. Um, what happens if we just graph the whole thing? And all of a sudden we end up with this, you know, each item on its own branch, but still grouped together by the second indice. Well, come here, hit run, and there you go. So it's still grouped together by that uh, into sublists, and then within each sublist, it's uh, each item is on its own list, just like it is here on its own branch. So this is it. This is probably the the simplest thing that you can uh, you can imagine for transferring geometry. You have full control over the data structure on the grasshopper side, um, and it just you know transfers seamlessly into Dynamo. Uh, so let's talk about our export data component. Um, the data is anything from a string to a number, right? It's not geometry per se, it's not points, lines, splines, it's, uh, it's just numbers or strings. So let's grab a range component and that's, your pro that's probably the easiest, the easiest piece of data that you can have, right? And it just generates a list of numbers from 0 to 1. So the rest of that component is the exact same setup as the previous one. It's your file path and your boolean toggle. Uh, let's just set this to false so it doesn't overwrite because we're using the same file. Um, set this to true and now if we update our definition we're gonna get a list of points and you see that the list got transferred as a list of the sublists just because of those extra indices in our, in our path. If we were to simplify this uh, actually simplify one word, uh, flatten. Now we only have a very simple list here. This is exactly what's going to happen. Um, if we wanted to graft it, to put each one of them on its own sublist, let's run it. This is exactly what, what happens. So let's graft it and simplify it. And here's your data structure. Um, so this is it, and we can, you know, you can do the same things with with strings, numbers. Uh, this is what really constitutes to a data input. Um, so this is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, really simple. I hope it's pretty straightforward. Um, another thing that I usually tell people to look out for when they moving stuff between those two. If you do happen to get an error, if something doesn't work exactly, and the output from this node is none or null, uh, the easiest way to troubleshoot it is if you double click it and copy this Python script and just paste it, paste it on the canvas and rewire it like you would the read grasshopper node, it should do the exact same thing. But, in case that you get an error, this should turn yellow and you should get a message over here. That message is hugely important for me to troubleshoot if you're trying to uh, ask me for help. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Um, hopefully there's not going to be any errors, but this is the way to troubleshoot it. Um, Alright, thanks for watching. In the next video I'm going to go over how to export stuff from Dynamo to Grasshopper.